Hello, my name is Emma and I'm a self-confessed paleo addict. In my many hours of gameplay, I have learned a few things along the way, so I'm gonna share them with you in this video. There'll also be some tips and tricks thrown in for good measure, so sit tight and get your listening ears on as there is a lot to learn. So straight in for number one, make sure that you are visiting the general store every single real life day and making a purchase. Because if you do this, you will receive a lucky coin in the mail for you to spend. Whilst in town, don't forget to visit the furniture shop as it appears to refresh every time you re-enter the village map. When in the shop, also don't forget to pay attention to the things on the back walls as these are for sale too and they're easily missed. If you are looking to level up your friendship levels with NPCs, don't forget to talk to them every in-game day. If you want to speak to a lot of villagers, keep an eye on the inn as a few of them tend to gather here for a drink and it will save you traipsing around the map. If an NPC has stepped away from their shop for a moment, they are allowed lives too. Don't worry, you can still interact with their shop by approaching the glowing till. You can also purchase from NPC stores whilst they are out and about enjoying a stroll in the world. Gifting an NPC is also another great way to increase friendship levels. You can gift a villager every day, but each week the villagers have items they can request. The amount of items that appear is dependent on your friendship level. Speak to them more to find out what they may like as they will give you hints and tips. And sometimes speaking with other villagers will tell you what a particular character may want. Gifting likes are based on a character's role or personality within the game. So for example, Jell is the tailor, so he would like fabric. If you try to give a villager an item and they do not like it, do not worry as they will not accept it. Gifting is just one of the reasons why you should not sell every item as you never know what an NPC may like. For example, make sure you keep hold of waterlogged boots, wagon wheels and ship fragments from fishing as NPCs can sometimes like them. Do not ask me why, very odd. You might be thinking, what is the point in all of this leveling up? Well, the higher your friendship level with someone, the more quests you will unlock and also it allows you to romance people. Traveling around the map can take a lot of time. If you want to sprint, just tap the sprint button and to turn it off again, tap the button again. If you find one of these geezers on the map, stand in it for a moment and it will jet you up into the air. This is great to use alongside your glider to get an extra bit of movement. You can walk in shallow water, however, there is no swimming. If you enter deep water, you'll be dragged back to land. When climbing cliffs, you can also jump up. However, this does take more stamina. If you do happen to fall, do not worry as you will get no damage as there is no health bar. If you want a quick way to return home, you can click the return home button on the map. There is, however, a 30 minute cooldown for this. You can set waypoints and track a particular NPC or location using the middle mouse button on your map. You can also set waypoints in the world as well if you wanted to using the same button. However, sometimes they do not last long. One day in Palea is equal to one hour in real life. New mail or post is delivered at 6 a.m. in-game time. Your crops will also tick over at 6 a.m. as well. Your shipping bin ships produce every 30 minutes. If you cannot wait for the shipping bin, you can sell items at Ziki's general store. If you never want to miss a letter, when you have mail, it will appear by your clock so you will know to check your mailbox. Also, when you're back at home, your mailbox will glow and sparkle. If you press K, you will enter camera mode and your photos will be stored here. Do not worry, I will put it in the description for you so you can copy and paste it. Make sure when you're out and about on the map to keep your eyes peeled for loot chests, you will gain some goodies and gold from these. Renown is a form of currency used within Palea. The amount you have can be found in your inventory next to the gold. You can earn renown by raising friendship levels, leveling up skill and completing quests. Be sure to check your accomplishment page if you need to earn some extra renown quickly. You can use renown at the Phoenix Shrine to increase your focus bonus buff or at the Dragon Shrine to increase your max focus. Renown can also be used to purchase writs to expand your home plots in the city hall. City hall is where you can expand your house by purchasing extra rooms if you want to, but be warned they do cost a lot of gold. 
You could also buy licenses here for extra crafting machines to be placed on your home plot, but prices do increase for every one purchased. If you are struggling for inventory slots, then backpacks can be purchased from the general store. The first upgrade is 500 gold, the next is 5000, and finally, the final upgrade is 50,000. Your starter tools cannot break, however, once upgraded, tools can downgrade or break. To check the health of your tool, look at the yellow circle surrounding it. You can repair your tools either at the blacksmiths in town using gold or repair kits. If you purchase a recipe, you can also have your own anvil at your house. However, this will only repair your tools using repair kits, which you must craft. You shouldn't ever have to worry about there being a shortage of resources on the map as each server caps at 25. But if you are struggling to find a particular resource on the map, then I will link an interactive resource map below, which is very useful for finding something that you're in need of. If you're not a fan of hunting, you do not have to do it, it is optional in the game. You can purchase loot from hunting in shops and request them from players also. If you do want to hunt, there are two types of creatures, the Cernic and the Chaffa. Both have three different types and once you have caught all of them, you will get a certain reward for them. The main spawn locations for the Cernic are Mirror Fields, Leaf Hopper Hills, Whispering Banks and Pulse Water Plains. It is worth hanging around them and trying to kind of create a loop around them if you want to get some good kills. If you ever struggle to know who you should speak to regarding a particular skill, you can go into your inventory and hover over the skill icons and it will tell you which NPC corresponds with that skill. Sparkling bugs are higher quality bugs and bubble spots in the water signify a possible higher quality fish. Bugs and fish with a gold star are placeable in the world and they get their own cute little display cases. Gold star fish and bugs sell for 1.5 times the value but bear in mind it might not be time and cost effective to go hunting specifically for bubble spots because you can fish anywhere in the world and it may be catch a few fish in the time it takes to find a bubble spot. Some higher quality bugs and some types of bugs will be harder to catch so just keep throwing multiple smoke bombs until they become lootable. Some types of bugs will appear from rocks that you've harvested, so be prepared to change quickly your tool. Fishing with bait will give you different types of fish that you can catch, and these are generally of higher cell value. I recommend using glowworms. If you want to change your type of bait or type of smoke bomb, right click and choose the one that you're wanting. Every fish has a specific spot where it can be found and some will require a specific type of bait. In addition, some will be only available at certain times of the day. If you hover over bugs and fish in your storage or inventory, it will tell you where they can be found. Despite the rumours, grilling fish does not appear to increase the value. As you can see, these two fish have a combined ungrilled cell value of 44, and when I've taken the time to grill them, it is still worth 44 gold, so do not waste your time. One thing that will make you money is Fisherman's Brew. You can buy this recipe from Enar, and the materials combined valued cost 38, but when sold, it will make you 95 gold. It's worth noting, not all water is fishable. If you can stand in the water, you cannot fish in it. You can fish on your home plot if you're feeling a bit lazy and you don't want to trek all the way into town. And makeshift furniture can only be obtained by fishing. And this furniture is really cute. I love it. I'm going to be fishing so hard to try and find some of this. If your skill levels are not upgrading as fast as you would like, make sure that you are eating as eating in this game provides you with focus, which gives you an experience bonus. There are cooking recipes scattered throughout the world and you can also obtain them by completing certain tasks. Keep your eyes peeled for any books that are laying around. Cooking recipes can also be obtained by fishing. If you meet a certain criteria, you may have a chance to find one. If you have not yet crafted a wardrobe, but you want to change up your outfit, you can do this by heading down to Jell's tailor store and speak to the doors on the left hand side and you should be able to change your character from there. When it comes to farming, tilling is not a one hit action like in many other games. Imagine you are painting a wall, but you are using it with the dirt. That's the best explanation that I can give for it. Tilling the ground can randomly give you resources, which is a nice bonus. And when you're harvesting your crops, you can also get the chance to give you seed bags. 
Purchasing seeds from the shop is expensive, so I would recommend purchasing the Seed Maker recipe ASAP as one vegetable has the potential to turn into a number of seeds. It's a no-brainer. If you want more soil plots, speak with Badru and he will sell them to you. The first extra plot is 250 gold, but they get more expensive the more you buy. You could purchase up to nine plots in total, which equals 81 crops. Don't forget to fertilize your crops as this will have the chance to increase the quality of them. You can stack the same type of fertilizer on top of one another. You can get fertilizer by leveling up your fishing skill and purchasing it from Enar's store. Don't worry, your crops will never die even if you forget to water them. If you plant tomato seeds, you will get multiple yields from them, so it may be worth investing if you don't want to do too much farming. When planting crops, they can give you extra boosts to other crops. You can examine these by having a look and seeing what they say. There is a whole bunch of math behind this, so I'm not gonna recommend anything, but it is definitely worth experimenting so that you can get the most out of your crops. On your home plot, you can have a max of eight storage chests. And it's worth noting, furniture does not count towards your storage limit. So if you're getting full up on wood, make sure that you craft some furniture. You can purchase different types of storage chests from the furniture store at the till and they all have unique things. When taking items from a machine, it goes directly into your inventory bar, but you can actually move this from your inventory bar and drag it straight into your storage at the top. This will save you having to go into your chest. It just makes it a whole lot smoother. You can auto craft from your storage, but it will not pull from crafted items that are stored within your crafting machines. Make sure that you have your crafting machines working at all times whilst you're playing, as they do take a while to work. And before you log off, make sure you process longer taking items, for example, silver into silver bars. Upgrading the smelter will reduce the crafting times marginally. It isn't a lot, it's just very, very tiny. If you go into your campfire, you can actually click on the fish picture or whatever it is that you're crafting and you can select which item will be pulled from your storage. There is also a tick box that allows you to pull gold star quality items to craft as well. Crafting more DIY recipes will unlock more of the same family of furniture, but once you max out of that particular group, you won't be able to learn any more recipes. To customize furniture, you must have the customization bench. You can purchase the furniture modification kits from the furniture store till for 100 gold each. Once you have crafted a furniture item on the blueprint, there'll be a green tick. When on your home plot, if you press H, you will enter the home edit mode. When in this mode, you can select your house and edit the house's windows, walls, even kind of gateways into other rooms, really nice. Also in H mode, you can move outside furniture. This includes full storage chests. To move items when inside your house, press control, and you can do this in like first person style mode. And if you want to do it without the grid, you can turn that off and have free placement by pressing Z. To be able to place furniture items on top of others, sometimes you may need to get some height. So jump on a cabinet and you should be able to place them. If you want to, you can place wallpaper outside of your house and you can also place wall items on your outside walls. Wallpaper is multi-use, so it's unlimited. You can use it on multi different walls, which is great. You don't have to rely on Q and E to rotate items or furniture. You can actually use your scroll wheel, which I do find a lot easier. You can actually have different save slots for your home. So there is a potential to decorate multiple areas. I love that. So there we have it. I think it actually turned out to be way over 100 different tips, tricks, and bits of information. I hope I didn't blow your mind too much. Let me know in the comments if you have other tips and tricks that you want to share with the community. This is a huge learning curve for everyone at the moment. So the more info, the better. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye.